Recently, while working on my game, I ran into the following problem. I want to implement an ecosystem and therefore I'm required to populate moons with plants and I could just simply do this with a lot of sprites, but since in my case you do not really need to precisely interact with those plants, I was going to make all plants on the moon a multi-mesh to save performance. The problem is I want to apply a wind sway shader to those plants, which is absolutely no problem if every plant is a sprite, because then you just make the shader unique for every sprite and change the parameters, but when you use a multi-mesh node you only have one material slot, so you can't just duplicate shaders anymore. This will lead to all plants swaying in unison, which doesn't seem very natural. But don't despair, there are multiple solutions to that and I will show you two of them. First of all I am going to add a sprite with the plant texture and I add a negative light source so that we can only focus on the silhouette of the texture. Since we work with a multi mesh we are also going to convert the sprite to a mesh. Also this is not a video about a general multi mesh setup, so I will just quickly go over how to do this. Basically all you have to do is load a mesh, in my case I load the mesh from the node which was previously a sprite and assign it to the multi mesh instance multi mesh resource and then loop over the instance count and set the instance transforms. And by the way if you don't want this harm bug to happen you should really consider not forgetting to apply a texture to the multi mesh instance. Already way better. A bit of instance count and location tweaking and the setup is complete. Now I will show you how I write shaders. This is how I write shaders. Quickly change world matrix to model matrix, tweak some shader uniforms and apply it to the multi mesh. So the first method is using instance ID built in in a shader and this method is very simple but offers limited control. Basically let's just multiply the wind force with the instance ID cast to a float and, and let's see what happens. Well as you can see this happens. For better quote unquote randomization just put everything in the low budget randomizers called angle functions. The second method offers way more control. For this one we are going to set the instance custom data via the multi mesh. That way you can pass a color to the shader as a more or less argument. But don't be fooled, it's not really a color in a sense of a color. This is just a wrap around float values. Now we can access instance custom within our shader, but before that we have to change the I swear to god weirdest behaving property I have ever seen, because we need to enable use custom data, but we can't do that, that's because the instance count has to be set to zero for this action to be allowed. So let's quickly change instance count to zero, set use custom data and set the instance count back up. I randomly spread out the custom instance around the shader and voila, this is already slowly becoming something you can work with. 